A new study shows that the rate of undiagnosed cases of dementia has decreased significantly. The well-being of the Singapore Elderly or Y study tracks what's called the treatment gap. That's the proportion of people who have the condition but did not receive treatment. It reveals that undiagnosed cases decreased to just over 51% in 2023, compared to over 70% in 2013. This is encouraging because it means that more people are being identified and receiving the required treatment. And that's important because although we will say that, um, you know, there's no cure for dementia, but certainly much can be done. The study, led by the Institute of Mental Health, looked at over 2,000 people aged 60 and above. It showed that last year, 8.8% of them had dementia, compared to 10% in the first study in 2013. Now, as for the treatment gap, the authors attribute the decrease to people being better informed about the disease. I think it's probably due to greater awareness and I think there has been a deliberate uh, attempt to raise that awareness and the awareness is not just among the local population but also among the professional caregivers. For example, family physicians are trained to better identify the, those with dementia. The study also finds that caregivers of those with dementia are almost twice as likely to suffer psychological distress than those helping people with other conditions. Support groups point to the emotional toll the disease exacts on the people around sufferers as a primary reason. This person I'm taking care of is my husband. And you know him for 20 years, you know, so it's like, it's a bit difficult sometimes. It's sad. And it's a very lonely journey. <laughs> By the same time, I would say it's actually fulfilling because that's where you actually found your strength. Yeah. This journey for Miss Elizabeth Chong started a decade ago. First, when her husband needed full time care for a heart condition, then for dementia after his diagnosis last year. It's not just a physically demanding task. Mm, personal life actually non-existence <laughs> because you have no time to go out. Because even you want to bring him out, he might not uh, be able to communicate with other people. So you, know, it, 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 you make your friends and family feel uncomfortable as well. Being a full-time caregiver mm -hmm. means the finances aren't easy either. But they qualify for certain social care schemes. Ms Chong hopes that extra help, like having other people watch over her husband or respite care, could be cheaper. One social group says such hourly care could be costly as it's mostly done by the private sector. So that's why it would be good to have like government having more, uh, so-called setting up more respite care services yeah, for caregivers with uh, persons with dementia. The health ministry says it provides a broad range of financial support. This includes means-tested subsidies and long-term care insurance schemes. Caregivers can also tap on an Agency for Integrated Care grant, which provides subsidies for caregiving training. Associate Professor Maithili Subramaniam is one of the co-investigators of the study. She's also Assistant Chair, Medical Board of Research at IMH, and she joins us live now in the studio. Dr. Maithili, welcome to the program. So generally encouraging news there, uh, a slight drop in the prevalence of dementia cases, and fewer people are going undiagnosed compared to a decade ago. Uh, tell us, what have we supposedly done right uh, to achieve these improved figures? Um, I think we have done a number of things right. The first well-being of the Singapore elderly study had some pretty startling figures of, you know, 10% of older adults having dementia. Mm. And I think that kind of changed things both for people with dementia as well as some of the initiatives that were out there. Very simple things like active aging, which has been such a big focus of the government. And, you know, you can see all the older adults like exercising very regularly and religiously every morning. They do all things, all kinds of things, walking, tai chi. The point is keep moving. 
This mm. takes care of chronic conditions. It also helps you make uh, great friends. Uh, and physical activity, we all know, does have tremendous amount of protective effect against dementia. Mm. But I think people are also doing other things. They're keeping their brain stimulated uh, by doing simple activities, which you know challenge their brain. Could be as simple as Wordle or Sudoku in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, or doing other things. But uh, more importantly, I think. Uh, when they have chronic medical conditions like diabetes or hypertension, and I agree that prevalence has not decreased, but maybe people are taking more care of it. They mm -hmm. are treating it earlier, and maybe the complications are getting lesser. That could be another factor which we cannot assess in our study, uh, but all these factors could have led to a decrease in the prevalence of dementia. As you said, it is important uh, to keep moving, right, and to stay active. And your study says that homemakers and retirees are at a greater risk of dementia. Um, we found that, yes. Uh, it's an independent risk factor. We also found that when this factor changed, it had an impact on the decreasing prevalence of dementia. Now, I have to acknowledge that my study was a cross-sectional study, which means that we just go in, we survey, we come out. Mm. Uh, so it is possible that people who had cognitive decline would not be able to perform at the top of their job and they probably resigned and they became homemakers. Mm. But studies elsewhere, and as I said, our longitude, our data across the two studies seems to suggest that just working actually does have some protective effect. And I know people sometimes laugh at me when I say that. But think about it. When you work, your brain is stimulated. There's in fact a study from overseas that says that the more complex jobs you do, the more likely you are to avoid dementia. Mm -hmm. It is also possible that when you're working, kind of you alluded to it, you keep moving, right? Yeah. And the third thing is you make very good friends at work. Some of my best friends are at the pace of work, you know. I have to agree. We just saw a story earlier um, about Elizabeth Chong, a full-time caregiver for her husband. Take us through the strain that dementia places on families and caregivers. I think... Um, Personally, for me, that is one of the biggest challenges that I face with when dealing with a person with dementia. It is the caregivers, the impact on the caregivers. Although there are positive aspects of caregiving, and you could see that in that beautiful film that you had made, but there is definitely a stress on them. Mm. Um, and I think the stress comes from different aspects. One of them is really not knowing uh, or coming to terms with the change that this person has gone through. From an independent, well-functioning person, you know, who had a great sense of humor, you may suddenly have a person who doesn't recognize you at all, who needs you to do everything. That can be quite overwhelming by itself. The person not recognizing you, the person talking about a person who's already passed away and you not knowing how to react to that. Mm. A lot of times caregivers, even though now today they are much more informed than before, they just don't know what to do when they do some of these, uh, you know, this change behavior is exhibited. The other part is really as the functional decline in de uh, you know, increases, the caregiver has to provide physical support, whether it is feeding the person, you saw that, if they have to go out, if they have to run their errands, everywhere this person has to go with them, you know, to make it happen. But then what about the caregiver's own time? Where do they have time for leisure activity? Where do they have time to look after themselves? Mm -hmm. um, so all this places a huge strain on them. A lot of caregivers cut down on their job, uh, you know, either they go on flexi hours or they completely quit working. It places a financial burden on them. Um, there are family issues, family dynamics, you know, who's going to provide how much care, uh, things that Asian yeah. families are not very willing to talk about. All mm. these lead to caregiver burden and strain. Uh, there's person. really a physical, emotional and economic, economic toll, toll on them. So, so what kind of support or intervention is needed then to, to sort of help them, uh, to help those caring for people with dementia? In exactly those three things, right? We pro need to provide them with more information, even simple things, you know, things like your legal aspects have to be taken care of, financial situation has to be thought about. Even uh, a lot of times ca caregivers have to be informed that these are difficult decisions, but you have to make them mm. uh, in terms of physical uh, Singapore, we are blessed that many of us are able to afford, uh, you know, a worker who is able to support us. But mm. can we do more? Can we provide uh, part-time or flexi workers for their uh, care? Some things which are being piloted in Singapore. In UK, I saw an amazing program where one dementia caregiver actually takes care of, you know, two or three people with dementia, while the other caregivers go and do their own thing. Mm. So we could even do it at a community level. 
Uh, and then last but not the least, can we support them in terms of their mental health? Uh, there are ways in which you know, they can overcome their depression and anxiety uh, while they need to be taught. Caregiver training is there, definitely in Singapore. Alzheimer's Dementia does a great job, uh, you know, Dementia Singapore, sorry, they do a fantastic job. But yes, we need to continue to support these caregivers in multiple ways. And what is always challenging, can we give them more leave? Can we give them financial support in terms of getting a helper? These are tough questions, but we need to grapple with them. Yeah, a lot of things to review, Dr. Maithili. Um, and uh, the conditions like stroke and depression, they are associated with dementia, isn't right. it? Uh, what are the telltale signs that we need to look up for, basically? And what more can uh, we do to sort of keep dementia at bay for as long as possible? Yeah. I mean, majority of us always think that, you know, uh, dementia presents as a memory problem. And that is the truth. In majority of the cases, that is how it presents. But it could just be a cognitive decline in other things. Somebody who was, as I said, functioning at the top of the job is not able to uh, pay attention to everything. The attention to detail is lost. So there could be an attention decline. Mm. There could be a decline in language. They struggle for words or, you know, the words that they were using before no longer make sense to them. Um, they start withdrawing because, you know, they find this communication or these memory issues difficult. Um, all these uh, little signs also point to, uh, you know, a, a cognition problem. May not be dementia. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it also reverts back to normal. So, yes, uh, looking at it early, uh, seeking care early, going to a doctor uh, and finding out what's going on. And, you know, uh, as I really said, physical activity is a big one. Um, and I think older adults have embraced it, but all of us need to do it. Not when we turn 70, but when we turn 40 or 50, we already need to think about it. Even things like mindfulness, right? Just having that uh, ability to deal with what old age brings to all of us, functional loss, loss of a loved one. Uh, these will be things that we have to learn how to deal with it to maintain an active social life despite some of these uh, challenges and to just continue learning. Um, I tell my students, you know, that starts from the time when you're young people, pay attention to what's happening because that's going to keep you yeah. mentally healthy for a longer time. So it's, uh, the, the tip is just keep moving. Just keep moving, right? just keep stimulating your brain All right. and have good friends. Sure, Dr. Maithili, <laughs> thank you very much for coming in to speak with us. That was Dr. Maithili Subramaniam, Assistant Chairman of Medical Board of Research at IMH, and she's also co-investigator in the latest study on elderly dementia. Thank you. Thank you.